Warning. Ox power unit failed. Well, out. Losing Warning. fuel quickly. Main fuel. Shut low. it down. We're gonna die. Warning. Main fuel depleted. Hey guys, this is Tex and welcome back to this Orbiter 2016 video series. This is part 12 of our series uh, that we've flown from the Earth to Mars. So in the previous part, I hope you enjoyed that little cinematic cliffhanger. Um, sort of came up with the idea of making something a little bit more exciting than usual. Uh, than I guess basically a standard uh, return and landing. So obviously we need to launch a rescue mission. We are here at Edwards in a very uh, quickly thrown together mission. Uh, we have this XR2 and this just bland paint scheme because it was uh, the only one available that happened to be sitting in a hangar. They dusted it off, put some fuel in it, threw some crew members in, a little bit of lock so they can breathe, and basically uh, ready to go. Uh, take a look, basically I've put 15 days worth of locks in for five crew members. I'm assuming if we put five more crew members in, we would basically half that lock supply, which should be more than enough for this flight. Um, I'm not sure how much fuel we're going to need, so I topped everything off. This is a flight that I have not actually tried, so I have no idea about the best way to do this. So uh, forewarning, this is probably going to be a lot of Buck Rogers flying. Um, it makes me feel very dirty saying that, and I feel like i got to go take a shower now. It's not the way I like to fly, but honestly... I just don't know the best way to do this. Uh, basically, I'm going to try and do a direct ascent. Uh, I, there's a lot of factors that I don't know. I don't know exact burn vectors. I don't know exact launch time. All I know is the heading we need to launch, and our flight is made just a little bit easier by the fact that the XR2 was conveniently able to get the off-plane distance uh, for Edwards here down to exactly zero. So we know that it's... Uh, orbital plane is going to be crossing directly over our launch site um, and uh, but the timing of everything I don't know and, and it may not be perfect so but what I have looked at uh, we're basically here let me go to this cockpit view so you can see the XR2 is here it's it's orbital plane is approaching our launch site uh, using the docking MFD I can actually see how far it is I believe that's five 1,514 million meters, maybe? I think that's million meters. Regardless, um, you can see its closure velocity is quite fast. Of course, it does have escape velocity. Uh, so basically, it's going to hit its periapsis, and then it's going to swing by the Earth and escape uh, the Earth's sphere of influence. So we not only need to reach orbital velocity, which is around, I think, 7,800 meters per second roughly um, but we also need to uh, you know uh, get up to you know quite a bit of velocity escape velocity over 10,000 meters per second um, so if I go to burn time MFD and I calculate Delta V uh, let's put in because this is climbing as it reaches periapsis see it's it's getting a little bit higher so let's just put in 10,000 and I don't know 40 maybe something like that so that's telling me that we would need a total of 2557 million meters uh, we can see the distance here however this is calculated using our main engines and it's also calculated assuming that we're basically in space of course we're not we need to take off turn to our launch heading bank up 40 you know uh <clears throat> angle up 40 40 degrees get out of the thick atmosphere pitch down um use scram engines we ha it's all that all that extra time that's going to take the scram engines are not as effective as the main engines so all of these factors it's just a lot of factors to consider and honestly i just don't know 
So this might be quite an exciting flight, to say the least. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so basically, I'm assuming if if it's estimating 2.557. Um, I'm just going to guess around 4.5, maybe 4 at, at a minimum. Let's say 4, <clears throat> okay, let's say about 4. I think that should be enough. So we're quickly approaching that. So at 4,000 millimeters, I guess. Uh, I guess that would be... Um, four okay so it's not thousand it's that would be four million meters okay so at four million meters um is when we would need to launch okay Whew. so with all of that said um i have the line planes already set up so we can watch our relative inclination and here's the orbit mfd so you can see here we are on the ground at edwards and here's the xr2 approaching its periapsis and conveniently, its periapsis happens to occur just past Edwards. So there's no doubt that this is going to make our flight that much easier. But nonetheless, it's not going to be an easy flight, uh, at least not for me. So <clears throat> with that said, let's go ahead and very carefully time accelerate and plan on getting off the ground here. So I will go to about 4.2 on the docking MFD. So there's 10x. Okay, there's 4.2. Let me drag the joystick over here. All right, joystick set up. Uh, let's go to the bottom panel. Let's turn off external cooling. Top panel, strobe beacon on. Everything up here looks good. Everything is closed. Let's go to our surface HUD. Let's turn on the APU. Let's go to pitch on. And there's we passed four. Let's go. We gotta go. Um, I'm guessing, uh, or I'm not guessing. I uh, I use the launch MFD to calculate our launch heading. It should be one three eight. So we're gonna turn to heading of one three eight as soon as we get off the ground. Raise the gear. And we are going to make this a very expeditious launch. I'm not gonna mess around. We have a rescue crew on board so they can take it. We're gonna push some G's here. All right, there's 138. Let's activate attitude hold. Let's pitch up. Okay. Go full power, rotation. I'll turn on rotation RCS. Let's go to a line planes over here, and we just want to make sure our rate of change is staying in the negative. Uh, for right now, I'm going to open surface on this side, that will be more useful to us. Start pitching down just a little bit. A little bit earlier than normal. Not much. the joystick. I don't need that anymore. Open the scram doors. Get ready to uh, initiate the scram engines. Scram engines are on, they're working.
All right, so we're looking fairly good at the moment. Let's go to map MFD. Let's monitor, monitor this every now and then. Back to surface. All right, so we basically have a nice uh, negative rate of change here. Um, we're not going to be able to get the orbital plane exactly on zero. I don't believe so because uh, our when we launched was probably not the most ideal time. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like the perfect launch time for aligning our orbital plane. But since we're going to do a direct ascent, we don't have a choice really but to do a direct ascent to the XR2. Um, it is what it is, so we're just going to have to use a bit more fuel, I think. So, all right, so we ha you can see the line of nodes is pivoting around on our position. So let's just uh, yaw a little bit to the left and try and keep that relative inclination as close to zero as we can. At the same time, we need to be monitoring our hold temperature and our, um, our climb rate here. It's a little bit too high, so we can pitch down. So there's going to be a lot going on here. So let me um actually is it okay? I need to yell more to the left <clears throat> in order to keep that relative inclination nice and low. All right. Sorry, my voice is really failing me today. Um. But yeah, like I said, you know, unfortunately I just didn't have time to uh, pre-fly this with a flight like this one that I've never done before. I would normally like to um, sort of pre-fly it just so I have a better idea of what to expect. Uh, in this case, though, I just didn't have time and this is something I've never, ever, ever done before. So it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. So if I turn on the docking HUD, you can see here's the negative velocity vector. I'm assuming that maybe that's what I should be aiming for. I'm not positive on that though. But uh, we have to wait until we finish with our scram engines because I don't want to climb that much out of the atmosphere just yet. We're going to try and use our scram engines as long as we can. Because obviously we're, uh, fuel is going to be critical here. So, well, I say that, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not actually sure. Uh, we may be o okay on fuel. I have no idea of what to expect because <clears throat> essentially we need to reach, or um, I'm sorry, escape velocity, which is something like over 10,000 meters per second. But then we need to do a 180 and come back. Uh, we can't just escape Earth and then, you know, go somewhere else. We don't have the locks or resources or anything to do that. So. Uh, that certainly makes the flight that much more tricky. Alright, so we are almost at 7,000 meters per second, which means we're that much closer to orbital velocity. Need to be yawing a little bit more over to the left here. Okay, so we're hitting scram temperature already. Warning. Let's bring the scram, scram engines down. Close our scram doors. Let's dump that extra Warning. scram fuel. Scram Warning. fuel dump. Now at this point, there's no need for us to stay Warning. down in the atmosphere. So Warning. I think what we'll do is let's go to Warning. docking. Scram fuel depleted. Let's put our HUD on. And let's uh, pitch up. And I think we might have waited too long to launch because you can see the distance here is coming down pretty quickly. It's already almost at 400 kilometers away from us. That's including altitude as well as downrange. Uh, and we still have a lot of closure velocity here. So um, let's see, we can probably go ahead and put the radiator out now. And I think we can turn off attitude hold. And again, I'm just assuming I should be pointing at this. I really don't know. 
Okay, we can turn off the APU. See, where is it? Plus. There's the XR2 right there. It's over top of us, so it's passing right over us right now. Um, I don't know. Let me open TransX here. Let me slow time down. And... I don't know if that's really helpful. What I want to know is... <clears throat> so basically, maybe if I go to orbit, it's easier to see. So you can see its fly path is coming out like this. So its fly path is coming out like this, but our orbit is actually going like this. So what I need to know is what is my burn vector so that I can bring my, f my orbit path, my flight path out like this. So instead of just burning prograde, I would have to burn which way is prograde? Let me go to orbit HUD. So prograde's down here, so I'm basically burning more to the right from prograde, which to me seems like that would bring our fly path over this direction. So I guess that um, I guess that's where I need to be burning. We're, we're just gonna go with it. I really, this is the big question mark. I, I don't know about burn vectors, so. Okay, so it's 250 kilometers away. Our closure velocity is uh, coming down nicely. Uh, there it is, right up there. Okay. So this definitely is not going to work, this burn vector. Um, so I think maybe I should maybe burn vector up. Where is um, my, there it is. Okay, that's bringing it up toward the XR2. Okay, so let me slow time down for a second here. All right, <clears throat> so the XR2 is up above us and it's moving forward from us. So I would say we need to burn down this direction in order to intercept it. Translation. 
Okay, so we're almost at escape velocity as well. Let's go to transacts. Let's um, view. Focus. Okay, so you can see our flight path is kind of going out a little bit. So let's face prograde. So there's the XR2. So I think we need to aim a little bit more over this direction in order to get there. Okay, so we're facing prograde. Rotation. Rotation. We're going to aim a little bit more over here. there okay now I wonder if I can use our linear RCS now or is our velocity too great <clears throat> let's bring that down just a little closer okay there we go so let's now use rotation, rotation. So we're 218 kilometers out, and we are closing on it at 400 uh, meters per second, just over. So that's not too bad of a closure velocity. Let's see if we can use our linear RCS and bring that velocity vector right over to the XR2. So what I was looking at on TransX is um, basically our orbit uh, our orbit was actually was going a little bit further out from the Earth than the XR2s. So I was basically just using that as a guide. Um, you know, maybe there was a way that I could use TransX actually for this whole thing, but I wasn't sure how to do that. So, okay, so let's translate and time accelerate. Wow, so 10x, at 10x translating, it's taking uh, 10 times acceleration to move our our velocity vector with translation thrusters just that little bit right there that's crazy all right so let's go to normal time speed here and let's um let's get that right on the center there all right so now we need to calculate how long how far we need to burn our retro engines to scrub this velocity difference so let's open our uh no sorry not scram doors let's open our retro doors Okay, turn the APU off. All right, so let's uh, burn time over here. External remaining is 616.2. And we want to put in a delta V of, is that, it's coming down, so let's call it 375. So to scrub 375 meters per second, we're looking at uh, let's, I was going to say that's awfully short, 2.4 2, 2 kilometers is, <laughs> we need to switch to retro engines. Okay, more like it. <clears throat> so 11.6 kilometers in distance. So that's relatively close. Um, let's go ahead though and make sure that velocity vector stays where we want it. And because basically our orbit is very our orbit is still very different from the XR2s we're gonna have to use some um, RCS in order to make sure we keep heading toward the XR2 it's hard to see with this view um, <clears throat> let me go to the bigger maybe view but you can see see here's a good example see the the orbital path is not exactly overlapping so our velocity is sort of taking us a slightly different direction than the XR2. 
Um, <clears throat> that's the question mark that I wasn't, wasn't sure about. That, that would come into the burn vectors. Um, ideally, maybe I could have used transx or something like that, <clears throat> excuse me, gosh, to calculate exactly what our burn vectors should have been. Um, but this was the very Buck Rogers part of the flight, so eh, I guess it is what it is. Um, sort of a little bit more exciting, maybe. All right, so we are closing. Let's uh, translate down again. Um, so according to burn time, of course we've been using a little bit of linear RCS, but according to burn time, we have just over 6,000 meters per second in delta V remaining. Um, that should be enough to get us home, so we should be okay. Uh, let's update our DV. It is now at three, uh, let's call it 365. Let's call it 368. Closure velocity is just about, uh, it's 369 now. It's about to be 368. So in order for us to scrub 368 meters per second with our retro engines, we're looking at 11.2 kilometers in distance. That still hasn't changed a lot, but it's closing pretty quickly. Rotation. So I'm gonna rotate and uh, we're gonna point that um, point at that velocity vector. And we're going to get ready to burn here in just a moment. So let's update our DV now. It's 367. By the time it comes around, I bet it's going to be 365. Okay, there's 365. Translation. I'm going to use translation again. Rotation. So closure velocity is 366 and still falling. Um, I think 365 is probably a pretty good bet. It's not going to change a whole lot. Even, even if it went to 364, it barely comes down to 10.9. So uh, it's falling, so that's okay if we break a little too early. So I think I'll leave it at... Let's go 365. So I think just 11 kilometers in distance should be sufficient for braking. Translation. I don't know how close I want to actually cut that though. So we're already at 365, and it's falling. It's going to be it's going to be nip and tuck by the time 11 kilometers comes around. So why don't we say 11.5? We're going to hit the burn button. I think that'll work. Okay. Rotation. Rotation. And let's get ready to burn. And we're burning. So we're going to use um, rotation in order to basically keep that velocity vector pointed right at the XR2 there. We're very close. I'll come off to the side of it just a little bit. under one kilometer. Translation. And I can see it right there, just ahead. Rotation. Wow. I can't believe it. We have actually made it. Um, <clears throat> let me do a final braking maneuver and we're going to calculate just how much fuel we have left, but I think we'll be okay. 
Now, we don't want to mess around up here too long. Um, I'm not sure what the most efficient way to get back to um, Earth would be. But that will be for the next part, because this part uh, was basically going to be getting up here. The next part will, of course, we'll go ahead and cover... Uh, actually, the next part, I believe, we'll go ahead and wrap up the series, because we're going to get back on the ground. But this poor XR2 here is uh, doomed to be orbiting the solar system forever because um, we didn't have enough fuel to bring fuel up here to save it. All right, so let's break a little bit more. Actually, we need to get around to the front side so that we can dock, and it looks like it has some uh, looks like it has some angular velocity. I guess it's uh, banking, so that's not good. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. All right, so we are here. And there they are, very much stranded. But they are extremely lucky we were able to make it up here to them. Wow, what a great view. It's like uh, South America down there right below us. Very cool. Um, all right, while we coast around to the front side, let's see. We have 599.8. So we're looking at around 5,900 meters per second in delta V remaining. So that's not bad. It's not bad. I think we'll I think we'll be okay. Uh, so Rotation. continue rotating around to the front side here. Of course, um, we're gonna have to get them to open the nose cone. Um, hopefully, they have some APU fuel remaining. And we can probably go ahead and open our nose cone as well. Okay, nose cone is opening. Translation. Nose cone is open. Let's turn off the APU. And let's hop over into the other vessel real quick so we can open that nose cone. System All right. Reset. They do have APU fuel. Very cool. Okay, nose cone is opening. Wow, so this vessel has been through... Uh, been through quite a lot throughout this journey. Where's the other XR2? That should be coming around in view. Oh, because we're rotating around. There it is. Okay, nose cone is open. Let's turn off the APU and let's hop over into the rescue vehicle. All right, so this is going to be interesting docking. We're going to have to match that uh, rotational um, velocity, I guess, that. Uh, that XR2 has there. So let's go ahead and uh, target. Um, you know what? I should be doing the nav frequencies and everything, uh, but I'm just going to use the cheat method here because we are already over 30 minutes on the video, and I wanted to go ahead and get docked here uh, in this video. Um, okay, so let's translate forward a little bit. Um, I don't believe I've ever docked with the vessel while it's rotating, so this will be this will be Rotation. interesting. Okay, let's not worry about our bank alignment because obviously that is changing, assuming there's no other rotational um, issues. <clears throat> let's um let's get aligned this direction.
Okay. Translation. Let's translate over. Switch to this view. Rotation. Wow, I think I matched it with that was almost matched pretty pretty close there. Just a bit more. No, too much actually. Go back the other direction. Ooh, this might uh, make me a little dizzy here with the earth in the background. Translation. Okay, so let's translate toward it a little bit. Up. Rotation. The hard part about this is when I adjust rotation, I can't just hit kill rotation. That really does suck. going to make this very, very difficult. I'm going to use a lot more RCS fuel to do this. <laughs> oh boy. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Well, it may not be the prettiest docking, that's for sure. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Oh man, <clears throat> this is actually really difficult. This may be sort of a hard docking here. Translation. We're going to have to be Rotation. more aligned than that. Translation. Translation Rotation Translation Sorry if I'm not really talking right now, but this is taking like oh that was Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I guess it's not terrible, but um, it is what it is. Wow. Yeah, sorry. Once again, I was not talking through that because I was taking um, every bit of brain power I had and staying on top of all of those um, all of those alignments. Wow. All right, so we are here. Um, I guess we can go ahead and uh, stop these guys from being so dizzy. Skill rotation. 
Very cool. All right, guys. So if we could, we would just bring your whole vessel back with us, but obviously we can't do that. Um, let's. Uh, so there we are. Very cool. What a great view. Um, let's uh, do a last bit of uh, fuel calculations here um, and get the vessel set up so we can uh, let's see uh, okay so why don't we go ahead and put some of this um, RCS into the main tank first of all that should be sufficient um, Okay, and then let's get the, the crew over into our vessel first, and then we'll do our fuel calculations before we end this part. So it took us 35 minutes to get up here. Wow, that's not bad at all. And once again, we don't want to mess around up here too long because, um, well, I, I'm assuming that because if we take a look, I mean, right now we're still very much obviously in Earth's sphere of influence, and I'm not sure if it would actually be better to... Um, coast out away from the earth a little ways and then come back uh, do a burn to come back or if it would be better to just go ahead and and burn now um, so maybe in the comments below guys especially uh, Dimitri and you guys if you're still watching this series I know you guys are very um, very good with this with the, all of this stuff uh, let me know what you think what would be the most efficient way since we didn't obviously choose the most efficient way to get up here maybe I should consider that going home so um, yeah if you happen to know would it be more efficient for me to uh, basically coast away out of uh, a little bit out of the sphere of influence of earth before I try and come back um, or should I just immediately basically do a burn to uh, bring down the eccentricity so that we are no longer escaping earth's gravitational um, influence I don't know if maybe that would be more efficient and then um, I, I guess bring the, our periapsis down into the atmosphere and then that way we could use the uh, the atmosphere to basically uh, either circularize the orbit or just do a direct entry back, uh, back at Edwards. Um, so anyway, all right, with all that said, let's uh, get the crew over. So we need to turn on the APU, open both of the doors. Using external O2. Okay. I guess we can turn on external cooling. And our radiator is still deployed, so that's fine too. Um, actually, let's close our retro doors. We don't want to accidentally uh, use those. Okay, so let's turn off the APU. Turn off that. We can turn off our HUD. Okay, so that's good. Let's hop over in the other XR2 here. And um, turn that off. Let's uh, open the doors. Using external O2. And let's make sure there's nothing else we need to do in this one. Um, because uh, once we transfer the crew over, you know, you can't modify anything here. So let's uh, power down the MFDs, uh, everything. Of course, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, we're leaving this thing behind in orbit, so what, what does it matter? But... Um, all right, so the doors are open. So basically, we'll transfer the crew over, and then, of course, when we undock, the doors are open, so this thing is going to be depressurized, but that doesn't really matter. Um, there won't be anyone on it, so let's um, EVA everyone over. That was a lot of crew members. Okay, so uh, no one is left on board here. So let's hop over into our other XR2. Oh yeah, no one's on board. Very cool. Um, so we go down here. So we have six days of locks left. So I guess that was uh, fairly accurate. Um, so we have 12 crew members on board. So we're good to go. All right. Uh, let me do a quick save here. And before we go, let's just take a look at uh, how we stand on fuel. So we have a total of 231.5 in RCS fuel remaining. So we're looking at, uh, oh, you know what? Because we're actually docked to this XR2, 
um, the total weight of our vessel is has changed. So um, this isn't accurate. We we actually have more delta V than that. So I think it was uh, like four thousand something. We we had over four thousand meters per second. I'm not going to bother undocking right now. There's no point in that. But uh, we should be okay on fuel. We basically just need to have enough fuel to, so that we can get our periapsis back down into the atmosphere and make sure that we bring our eccentricity down on the orbit MFD so that we're no longer escaping. Um, see, our eccentricity is over 1. So any eccentricity over 1 means that you have enough velocity to escape the Earth's uh, sphere of influence. So basically, we need to bring our eccentricity under 1 and uh, make sure that our periapsis comes down into the atmosphere. Right now it's at 154 kilometers. All right, so uh, I believe that will wrap up this uh, exciting, um, I, I'm not really conclusion, but uh, the uh, to be continued part from the previous part. Uh, so I think we're looking like we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the series in the next part, which will be part 13. Um, as always guys, really appreciate you watching. Hope you guys are doing really well. Uh, certainly wish you all the best. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you want to keep updated with all future videos. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the uh, next series or uh, next uh, Orbiter video. I've really been thinking about making sort of a more cinematic movie with Orbiter. That might be the next thing on the project list. Um, so if that happens, I might end up taking a week or two off from Orbiter videos just so that I can actually produce a more cinematic movie. Uh, that does take more time, so it's not that I won't be working on an Orbiter video. It just means that I may not have an Orbiter video out for a week or two while I work on that movie. But then once that movie comes out, um, get the popcorn out, you'll have something really fun to watch. And then maybe after that, I'll do another um, type of series. I don't know. Uh, what yet maybe something with a space shuttle who knows so um anyways i will stop talking now because we're way over the time limit and um yeah so uh take care guys and we'll see you in part 13 where we wrap up the series mm -hmm.